Hey friends, welcome back. This is the second in a three-part series of videos where I talk about my favoriteest IC resources. I have so many of them that I had to break them down into digestible chunks of videos. In the previous one, I talked about books. In this one, I'm gonna to talk to you all about podcasts. There's so many good ones. I have seven. Seven podcasts that I rank among my favorites, and I'm gonna go from least favorite to top favorite that you have to be listening to, and I'm gonna tell you the specific ones you need to listen to. This is gonna be a great video to store away for your resources, so I want it to be short. If we haven't met yet, my name is Bree. I'm a nurse practitioner. I make content for nurses, NPs, and students. Welcome to the channel. Okay, to keep this succinct, let's just get right to it. Coming in at number seven is the Dantastic Mr. Tox and Howard Show. <laughs> funky name, because it is a funky show. Um, I rank it lowest because it probably has the least clinical relevance for me, but there is some nuggets of wisdom in there, so I think it is helpful. Um, and they're just so freaking entertaining, these guys. They are, they just crack me up. Um, they are toxicologists, so it's all things toxicology, and we deal with some toxicology problems in the ICU, um, particularly with recreational drugs, but from time to time with some other stuff. So it is very helpful in those scenarios. So definitely check that one out. Number six is Critical Matters. This is one that I just recently kind of stumbled across and I re I'm really digging it. This is an ICU team talking about ICU things. Pros and cons. Okay, the topics are phenomenal. I love the topics they choose. The cons are that the, the host is a little bit more bland than I would like him to be, but the pro to follow up on that is that most of these, I think if not all of them, are interviews. So he's interviewing someone else who's a specialist within that field. They focus very heavily on evidence-based management, and I need tons of reinforcement for which research trials yielded what information, because I can never remember that stuff. So I really like this podcast. Number five is the IDSA, Infectious Diseases Society of America. This one's kind of at the bottom of the list because it's also a little bit on the bland side. The information can be a little dry. To me, it's a more palatable way to digest this information, which I need to know, but it's a very, it's a less, but can also just be very boring. <laughs> Frankly, it just can be very boring. So I'd rather consume it audibly than by reading it because I'm gonna fall asleep. <laughs> Hot tip, this is also where the questions on your boards will come from when it comes to infectious disease processes, they're going to go directly to the national societies who write the guidelines for these things. So it's a great one to be listening to while you're in school. Number four is called Critical Scenarios. This is also one I just recently discovered. A colleague told me about this one and I like these guys. These are two NPs and um, I, I like the way that they present information. The con is that their videos can be a little bit long. Most of them are around an hour, which I don't always want to designate a full hour for a podcast but I'll put it on time and a quarter, time and a half, and go hike in the woods and it just rolls by. But the information they present is in a completely different format than pretty much everything else out there. Um, they're going to give you a clinical scenario. They're gonna give you a patient and they're gonna give you the labs and all the diagnostics, and they're gonna walk you through the clinical application of diagnosing and treating this person. They have some great guest lecturers, and I find their content to be very applicable. Number three is called the Saving Lives podcast by Eddie Joe, who is an intensivist. Actually, I don't know where he's from. I shouldn't have let in that way, but his name is Eddie Joe. <laughs> I like him. Um, he, I like him because his podcasts are very short, usually less than 10 minutes, and they get directly to the point and they focus very heavily. It's almost more like a journal club. He's going to review the latest trials and help interpret it for you, which I definitely need help with. So I love him for that. That's why he comes in at number three. Number two. Mm. Okay, so number one and number two almost, almost are a tie. Really close. These are two that you should have like on speed dial on your phone. Like just have a standing list preloaded in your phone of podcasts to listen to. Um, and if you haven't listened to them before, this can give you months and months and months of material. So I think I'm gonna say number two is gonna be IBCC though. That's the Internet Book of Critical Care. Josh Farkas, chef's kiss. Love, love, love that man. He is one of the smartest individuals and I just love the way that he talks. And the other host is Adam Thomas and Thomas and Farkas feeding off of each other is absolutely hysterical. I, they are just, I love it. 
Anyways, they make me laugh a lot and the material is so, so, so good and so relevant, y'all. Easy to scroll through the podcast. The titles are very easy to read so you know exactly what you're looking at. So you can very quickly scroll down to the topic that you wanna read. They also get to the point really quickly without a lot of prodromal lead up stuff. Um, they just did one recently about scape, sympathetic crashing, acute pulmonary edema. <laughs> Go listen to them. Um, and number one, it's probably all y'all's favorite too, and that is MCRIT. Gotta love that wine guard. He is the OG. Fomed, top notch. Um, he is just almost so smart, I have a hard time comprehending him sometimes. But he thinks about things in a very different way, and so I love, love, love his material. My favoriteest thing in the entire world, every single person, if you're gonna be intubating, you need to listen to the laryngoscope as a murder weapon series. It's like, it used to be like four episodes. Now I think it's grown to like five or six. So good, I, I, I'm having a hard time coming up with the words. This is a must have. I tell all the new grads that come into our group, you should not be intubating until you have memorized all of these. And the reason is this. People focus so much, uh, it's very easy to get overwhelmed about intubation. It's one of the most intimidating procedures we do because if it doesn't go well, it doesn't go well. But it is a technical procedure. Using a blade to open up an airway, find the cords and stick a tube through them is a technical procedure. All the stuff around it though, that's the stuff that gets you into trouble understanding what's going on in the peri-intubation phase and the pre-intubation phase. What diagnosis does your patient carry? Why are you doing this intubation? Is this someone who needs an elective procedure done or is this someone who's in pulmonary edema or is this a COVID patient who's hypoxic or is this a patient who's in shock who's not compensating for their metabolic acidosis anymore? Very different scenarios. Very, very different things that you need to do to prepare your patient for intubation, for how you need to set the ventilator, for how you need to bag them, for how you need to pre-medicate them. Those all are key in your success in the patient not crashing once you intubate them. So, solid gold. If you listen to no other podcast of anything that I list listed here, if you're going into ICU work, you need to listen to that. It's specifically called laryngoscope as a murder weapon. And I can't I wrote down some of the numbers, like the, they're all over the place as far as the episode numbers. Um, intubating the metabolic acidosis patient is episode number three, which tells you how important it is. One of the first things he talked about, this is probably the scariest patient you intubate. Um, but there are others. I think intubating a patient that's hypotensive in shock, 104. Um, hypoxic patient is 173 and 174. There's one for neurocritical care patients, 129. The easiest way to find them is just to Google laryngoscope as a murder weapon, write down the numbers, and then go watch, and then go listen to them. You will save yourself and your patient unnecessary strife by doing so. Happy listening, friends.